I'm Amy Barrett Daffin, and I'm here today to talk to you about Stitch a Masterpiece. This is a book of iron-on transfers, but it's not just any book of iron-on transfers. What makes this book so cool is, well, one, that's my design on the cover. Oh, wait, those are my designs on the back. Okay, so those are three things that make it so cool, but then there's a few more. So I'm going to show them to you. In this book, you've got um, 25 iron-on transfers, but what's really neat about it is you've got the big piece of art, and then you've got that same piece of art in four or five other sizes. So you could do a really tight little detail. Um, you could do it really small and super fine floss. You can do it in all these different sizes. And then we also tell you the name of the art here on the side, and all of this art is in the public domain. Well, then the other part about it that's really cool is each picture has a gallery with color swatches. So it gives you an idea of what colors are in the famous painting to help you stitch it up, and then it shows you the line drawing. So it's sort of like a paint by numbers meets embroidery stitching. I'm super excited about this book and I'm going to show you one of the projects that I'm working on and this one is called Haystacks in Giverny by Lila Cabot Perry and it's from 1896 and this was during the Impressionist era. So I'm stitching here and what I'm going to do is just show you and talk to you a little bit about how I stitch and how I look at these designs. And then I'm going to show you how you can pick colors, how to make sure that the fabric you're choosing is a good choice, and then um, a couple of my favorite tools. So I typically, when I'm doing one of these, is I like to use the chain stitch a lot, and I go back and forth from doing a loose chain stitch, and then I'll do some tighter stitches um, on other parts of the embroidery piece and I tend to like to pick a fabric that has a uh, wider um, weave so it's not so tight so you can actually see here you know a little bit of opening in the fabric and I'll tell you why that's so important so I'm going to go ahead and set this down and take it out of the hoop I'm just I'm going to put my hoop right over here. And so here's the design and here's the photograph of the painting. So you can see that I'm taking a lot of creative liberty with this piece. I want to show you something because you can see that there are a lot of lines on here. Now I picked a design that had fewer lines because I like to um, color outside the lines. Some people would say I'm not a very good rule follower. So lots of lines can be a little overwhelming to me. So I tend to be a little looser and a little more free form. So when I see these lines here, what I know is it's trying to show me that there are shifts in the color. So you can see in this painting, you get some purples and some blues and some um, darker uh, greens and blues. So you get to sort of play around with the texture and with the colors. And I'll show you a couple ways that I do that. So this is one example. And then when you look at these colors, what I like are variegated pearl cottons. And I like the pearl cotton more than floss because I like my design to really stand up on the fabric. And these are a size eight, and sometimes I'll use a three or a five, but I like the eight because it's not overwhelmingly large, um, but it's big enough. And the higher the number goes, the thinner the pearl cotton gets. So when I started working on this, I was like, okay, what colors am I going to use? Well, I picked this variegated for the ground, and then I picked one that was a little bit darker for this um, haystack. And I even added in some darker green that was more of a solid. So I played around with adding different colors. And I also will take creative license and not do the exact colors that are in the painting. So you can see here there's a purple 
but I made it a blue. And I filled in even the roof line because I wanted that to stand out a little bit more. So you can have a lot of fun with it. I also picked this light yellow for the beginning of the skyline. And then I'm going to go with almost like a lightish purple or a light blue for up higher in the sky. So I'll either probably use that one or this one or this one for the sky. So this color guide for sort of the paint by numbers feel is great. And if, if it's important to you to make it color accurate, then use these. If you're like me and you like to sort of wing it a little bit and have it a little bit different so it looks more uniquely your own, play with the colors. It's completely up to you what colors you want to choose. And I'll also probably use some of this purple or maybe one that's a little bit darker, almost like this purple, here in the ground where you see the colors coming through. Even laying it down there, you can see that that color pops. So it's important to make sure that you're using a lot of colors to create that impressionistic feel. So then the next thing I want to show you, and I'm going to move this too, is there's lots of different fabrics you can choose. So this is more like a muslin, which is really nice and it's great. If you need a neutral background, go with something like that. But you can also play with stuff like this, like oak shop cotton, where you can iron it on. Just know that the darker your fabric gets, it gets a little bit harder to see. And I'll show you a good example of that, but it's still workable. So you've got something like that. So you could do it on um, a silk and you can see that the stitch, um, there's enough space between. Just know that if you do that, um, it can be a little hard to sew in and the fabric will actually shift when you put it in the hoop. This is a shirting con cotton and I would highly recommend don't use that. This is so tight, the weave is so tight that getting your needle through, um, you're not gonna have any fun stitching it. You're gonna be really grumpy and then you're gonna say, why did I ever choose that fabric? So don't do that. This is another example of silk and uh, I think it's lovely. It's got blue going one way and white another. And then this is a piece of silk that I hand dyed and I was thinking about using this. The next time I do something that has a sky background, I'm going to use this. And I think it'll be okay because the weave is tight, but it's not that tight, so it might work and it might not. I may not be able to use pearl cotton. I may have to use floss, but it might be worth doing. Another thing you can use that works great is quilter's cotton. And I wanted to show you this one in particular because um, I wanted to do the painting of the wave. And we're gonna see if I can find it in the book. And what I loved about it is in the painting, uh, you can see, um, I have it upside down here so you can't see, Okay, you can see how it's really dark here at the bottom and then it goes, this, the sky color changes. So I have been working on a quilt project using Jennifer Sampu Sky Ombres and I had a piece sitting on my table when I was getting ready to make this video and I was like, oh, wait a second. So I took the transfer and I ironed it on to here and I can see the lines well enough that I can work on it, but I get all the luscious background and the darkness in the waves so I can have a little bit more fun with my stitching. I can make my stitches a little looser because I want the fabric to show and I just, I think it's gonna be a really cool piece. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna show you is I'm going to do the horse and um, I'm gonna transfer it onto this fabric, be and this is a Quilter's Cotton by Robert Kaufman, and I'm doing that because this tone is up here in the background, and it's down here, and I think it'll make a really cool transfer. So we're gonna give it a try. I'm using the big image just so it's easier to show you, so I've, I've um, just used my scissors and cut the image out of the book. Let's set it right there. I'm gonna open up my fabric and I have way more fabric than I need. And I typically try to make it a little bit bigger than I would normally use because one, it's easier to hold it in the hoop. And two, 
who knows what I'm going to end up using it for. Sometimes I frame them. Um, most of the ones that I've done so far, I have put in picture frames and given to people as gifts. So I've got my fabric pressed and I've set my image down and I've made sure that the name is folded back. And I am going to um, go ahead and tape down the edges. So let's take that stunt iron, we're going to put it right in the middle. And we're going to let it start to transfer and then we're just going to slowly move out. And then we're going to move it back towards the other direction. So I'm just going to keep moving it around, making sure that transfer goes down. And this is the second time I've used this transfer. Look at that, I'm switching hands. It's getting really crazy. Uh, so we'll see how dark it is, because you can definitely use these multiple times if, if this is something you decide you want to do. If, if somebody says, oh, I love that one, will you make me one? Well, sure, because I can transfer it more than one time. So let's see here how our transfer is doing. So I am going to set the iron down and I'm going to just take a peek. And I can see most of it. The only thing that didn't transfer really well were my edges. So I'm just going to go back and do this corner and this corner and this corner and right up here. Okay, are you ready for the big reveal? I am. So I'm going to go ahead and peel it off. You're going to see it before me. And there's my transfer. And oh, you can see I got my words there. But that's okay because I'm going to frame it. Arr. Next time I'm cutting the words off. That's all there is to it. So now I've got this really cool design and I'm going, I can embroider it. And like I said, because I use the same background color, it gives me a lot of flexibility about what I'm going to do with this particular one. And this may not be a fabric color I would normally choose, but I think for this piece of art, let's go back and take a peek. So I've got it pressed down. I folded it up just to show you right next to the painting, The Blue Horse by Franz Marc. And you can see it's got this pretty color in the background and then when you're stitching if a little bit of this color shows through it actually creates this really cool rich depth and what do I mean by that on the screen you can see there were parts where I stitched it in really heavy and then there were parts where I let the gray background do the work and the same with the kiss I didn't stitch every teeny tiny little detail and I certainly didn't go with the colors that were in the painting. I went and I did it a little freeform, but I used that goldish brown background sort of to give you an idea of what it might be. And when you see it, you know for sure it's the kiss, but those colors and the shapes aren't exactly what's on here. And I think that that's part of the fun is using your imagination to create something that is beautiful. So take your time, have some fun, color outside the lines, use this as a guide, um, and just have a good time with your stitching. I find that uh, at night after I've had dinner and I wanna sit down and watch a show, just getting to work on my embroidery project is super fun. And so I'll keep making this one and um, and then maybe if I have it done in time for the holidays, I'll give it as a gift to someone. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And please remember to subscribe to CNT Publishing's YouTube channel. And until I see you again, bye-bye.